Welcome back, humor consumers, to the Life Happens Laugh Anyway podcast. I'm comedian Tracy DeGraff. And I'm Catherine, co-host and bestie. Well, good morning, Catherine. Good morning. This is episode number 97. Yeah. Uh, uh, take yeah. two. Take two, because it's... we recorded it yesterday, but then we had some tech issues, and we were all over the map with this particular situation, Yeah, this topic. I think we were excited about it or something. It was like it we was just like... vomited. I know. <laughs> Oh, geez. Oh, no. And now there's my phone going up. It's Potential spam, I see. Yeah. Mm. Crazy. Today is um, November 9th, 2022, just to just to set the, the date of mm-hmm. where we are in the grand scheme of things. And our topic today is Pam Hupp. Yes. And Pam Hupp is a convicted murderer who is serving a life sentence without parole in a Missouri jail. Pr- mm-hmm. Prison, I guess they call them. Not, yeah. not jail, but prison. She's behind bars. Right. And she's not coming out. That's, yeah. So, and she's convicted of one murder, and she's suspected in at least one more, possibly two more. Two. Mm-hmm. And those uh, trials are, well, one trial's coming up just in n- next month, yeah. December of 2022. And, and here's, let me just give the audience just the little, three little takeaways, like we always try to do at the beginning of each podcast. We're going to go over who is Pam Hupp. We're going to give you a background of her. We're going to talk about the horrific details of what she did. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then at the end of this podcast, we are going to just highlight personal safety because this is a murder case. It's not one that we, we don't no- normally do crime mm-hmm. topics. Right. Really. Right. I don't know that we have ever. Have well, we? no. We, we talked about we the obsession a- with true crime, but we didn't go over a case. That's right. And we did the Dahmer which case, wasn't which really not, well there no, was a murder <laughs> jeez <laughs> but let's yeah let's talk about why we're doing this one okay well why are we doing it because this so we relate to women about our age True. right yes and we're doing this because this story first of all is crazy it and is this woman this pam is and her friend that she's accused of of uh murdering are um, your suburban mom, unsuspecting. Right, middle-aged suburban mom. Yeah, Done, exactly. that's us. Right. And it's hard and to it's, imagine. And, it, and again, the story is so crazy that... Um, and according to the murderer, um, she says, this was my best friend. Yeah. And you're my best friend. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, <laughs> they that's to be debated. I oh. mean, not you and I. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Pam. And, and, right. That's yeah. why I said according to her. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's just dive in yeah. and let's see if our tech <laughs> will support what we are doing no. as well as um, we did pray yesterday over this episode. And so our hope and prayer is that you will stay tuned all the way to the end because we do have some scripture to share at the end of this mess because as always, right, we might as well. All right, and this podcast is brought to you by Puffin. Who's that? That's our husbands, Ken and Ron, and th- their nicknames. <laughs> we do this every time. I know. Our Muffin and Pooh. So we and call so them Puffin merged together. Merged together is, yeah, yeah whatever. They, Gag. they pay for these things that we do. <laughs> so do. thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Yeah. Keep working. All right, what say you about Pam Hupp? Who is she, Catherine? As we said, she is this middle class, likable woman who fits right into society, unsuspecting person who pretty much flew under the radar when she did have little off color comments here and there. She worked in the insurance company, actually at State Farm, Mm -hmm. and she's a friend to this Betsy. And they met and at work. They, they met were at work co-workers at for, State Farm. They were for 10 years. Yeah. And Betsy, she is this gregarious, um, outgoing, fun gal with lots of friends. And although, uh, by the way, this Pam, um, people say that she was, when she was younger and in school, she was popular. She was a cheerleader. She was likable. Um, and then in her adult years... She was likable, but she didn't have a lot of friends. She just kept to herself, mainly. She's married to this Mark, and she has two kids. Mm -hmm. And um, But other than that, just kind of unremarkable, really. Very frugal. 
very well, very and extremely frugal. as as we're about to unfold the details of what happened perhaps she became more and more obsessed with her own obsession yeah perhaps she had less um time for normal life because her thoughts were so focused on greed greed was her number one yes. deadly sin you know and as you said that the irony is um case the the uh, prosecutor which we'll talk about in a minute but mm-hmm. for now the prosecutor said this is a case about greed and but she accused russ, russ the husband the of betsy of greed where he there were there was absolutely no evidence of that and pam all along is so greedy all right anyway well give us give us kind of like the timeline there i know you've got some notes because we're going to try to keep us focused <laughs> yeah. and not vomiting facts all over the place for our poor listeners yeah well as we started to talk about pam and betsy met at work they worked together for about 10 years that's a long time it is a very it's not long like time. she just popped up you know right Sheesh. right yeah and so they both knew a lot about insurance mm-hmm. okay and betsy um she had cancer she had it started with breast cancer and then she um so at at some point, Pam and Betsy they kind of just disconnect. Not nothing happened, no falling out or anything. But um, Betsy, when uh, she plans this remission celebration of life cruise and friends, not and her celebration husband, of life like your dead life, but celebration of life because her cancer was temporarily in remission, and she yes. was ha- so happy about yes. that. That she wanted to go. She was actually a DJ for, yes. for a period of time. So like she to dance. Yeah, she likes to have a good time. She sure So she wanted did. to do it afloat on the ocean. Yes. And so uh, all these friends and her husband, in their, uh, her and her husband had troubles in the past, but they uh, they went to counseling. They went to church. They had a, a, a pastor that they both, um, you know, really took advice from and mm-hmm. things like that. So they had rebuilt their lives. Mm-hmm. Uh, things were good. And but Pam doesn't go on this cruise. I, she may have been invited, but she does not go. Mm-hmm. But when Betsy finds out a month before the cruise, you know, happens that the cancer is back. And this time it's pretty grave. It's um, on her liver. Mm-hmm. Well, guess who shows up big time Pam. in her life? Right. Pam. Pam drives her back and forth to all of her treatments. Um, and then con- that this is around the time that Pam says, yeah, that's that's we're best friends. So but, she Pam, it sounds to me like Pam was just butting in. She was like a Budinsky. Yeah. And she was um, inserting herself into the narrative of, of Betsy's life. Right. But nobody saw it that way. And Russ later says, I don't know, I, I, I met her like a half dozen times that's that's well, about you it you know hindsight is twenty twenty. yeah when you realize that she killed her for the insurance money well then you go oh duh no mm-hmm. wonder but you don't know that at the time right when you're going through it right gosh what a what a crazy lady mm-hmm. okay so then what happened well um so this really this all happens pretty quickly because yeah. i think betsy finds out in 2010 or 2011 uh, but it is in 2011 that um, she starts going to the chemo treatment mm-hmm. and Betsy, or rather Pam, has taken her. Well, then the night of the actual murder in 2011, that's um, in November. Wait, and- back, back up one step, because mm-hmm. before she's murdered, mm-hmm. Betsy, some way, somehow changed over her life insurance policy to list oh, Pam. Yes, that's a major thing. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. so we mentioned that they worked together at State Farm. They both knew insurance, yeah. blah, blah, blah. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Oh. That's what Pam does. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yesterday when we recorded, I, I went to the yeah. local gas station and bought both oh, Catherine yes. and I like a big gulp, whatever they're called, Slurpee yeah. foam oh, cup with a straw because that was on the on the series that Renee Zellweger um, portrayed Pam Hupp and that was like her little quirky thing was she was constantly sucking on one of these big slurpees yeah and you do see her in interviews Pam that is 
with the big slurpee yeah, and and do. witnesses say that she went there and she even said every, every day. single day because she was so frugal she would earn points or whatever i don't know for well, getting these slurpees. well the greed of this woman yeah. is beyond evil because she comes up with this plan to get this um term uh, terminally ill woman's life insurance money she knows betsy has um mass, mass how do you say that masterminded no metastasized oh she has metastatic or how, how are they yeah. say that breast yeah. cancer yes. it's in her liver yes. she's on her you know she's yeah. she's in a bad way mm-hmm. and she knows that she's probably gonna die of this disease and she she steps in somehow i don't know how she talked her into it or maybe maybe she forged her signature i don't know because well, all of that is still to come in the in the next trial yeah they they she didn't forge the signature because they went to this library and the librarian was the witness Witnessed it. yeah okay well somehow she convinced betsy to take away whoever was the beneficiary that was on there which is probably russ and put herself on there mm-hmm. because um she said if you give me the hundred and fifty thousand dollars, I'll make sure your daughters get it. Right. Where and Russ would, we, he wouldn't make sure that they got it. Yeah. Right. And and Betsy, it does seem to be that she was truly concerned that he might, you know, um, I don't want to use the word piss away. <laughs> what other? Well, word? <laughs> but uh, so so maybe maybe Pam played on that. So maybe there was yes, some kind yeah. of a thing where she thought maybe Russ really wouldn't be able to contain himself with that large sum of cash. And maybe he would just, you know, what you said, where it's gone and not there for the girls. Yeah, because the money. Uh, so the two girls weren't really Russ's, but he loved them like his own. They, I think they were very little when mm-hmm. he came into the picture. Right. They so were from a different marriage or yeah. relationship. Right. OK, so that sets up yeah. why that's a huge motive. Yeah. And did we say it was one hundred and fifty? Yes. Yeah. One hundred and fifty thousand, which isn't that much money. I'm sorry, but no, it's really not. But people have killed for a lot less. Oh gosh. Anyway, yeah. okay. So now yeah. go on. So now and, we're on the day of the murder. Yeah, and which is only five days later <sighs> after <laughs> they sign these papers. And can, you, can wait? Can I just say this? She couldn't just wait for Betsy to die naturally for yeah. God to take her. Yeah, she couldn't do that. They all knew that Betsy only had maybe two to three years to live. So Pam mm-hmm. can't. She can't visualize. I think, you know what, I think maybe she thought that um, something would happen where it would get switched back to Russ. Well, perhaps. I mean. Anyway. Yeah. She could have thought a million things. Yeah. Okay. So so keep going. All right. So then um, (laughs) the night of the actual murder, Mm -hmm. Betsy already had a ride. She was going to get her chemo treatment. She already had a ride planned. Her, some other friend. Uh, was take did take her actually to her treatment dropped her off and then that friend was going to pick her up and take her to her mom's house where then Betsy was going to wait for Russ to get back from his game night so he has game night I think every whatever it was Tuesday or whatever Mm -hmm. and uh, then Betsy would then go home with Russ right okay well Pam tells uh, Betsy that she wants to bring her home and Betsy says no I ha- I you don't need to I have another friend that's doing it or whatever well then Pam shows up at the chemo treatment and just <laughs> insists again on taking her home inserting herself into the narrative right and there's evidence because uh, Betsy then texts her husband and says Pam wants to take me home and put me to bed so that's so you know russ is like well okay and he continues on with his movie night game night whatever mm-hmm. with the, with his buddies he comes home he makes this 911 call he is over the top upset which to other people it sounded fake uh, but that's it i mean that there were, oh and he also said that it was suicide okay and, back up a step mm-hmm. because in between there in between Pam inserting herself and insisting that she be the one mm-hmm. to take Betsy home mm-hmm. and Russ being at the game night with four other men yes. who are all together. Plus one of their girlfriends. Okay, so there's mm-hmm. a lot of people there mm-hmm. that see Russ sitting on the couch. Okay, so then Pam gets Betsy home and what happens? What does Pam do? 
Pam stabs her 55 to 56 times. Crazy. Yes. And at some point, she also sent a text um, saying that she was home safe or to her own husband, Mark. Mm-hmm. But the timeline doesn't um, add up. She's trying to cover her tracks. She, she is. Yeah. And, right. And this whole plan and, is um, something that she's she's carrying this out specifically on this day because yes. she knows that Russ is gone because every Tuesday he's with these guys. Yes. And she's like, this is my chance. And Betsy's defenses are down because she just had treatment. Yeah. She's sick. She's probably exhausted. Weak. All of those things. And her daughters weren't home. So what evil? What evil is I that? Know. You know, I I do believe that Pam is not human. Like she is not of a human mindset. She, she is. She has such an evil, twisted mind for somebody to. And then we're, and it's going to get even worse than that. I mean, that yeah. is horrific. But now to cover her tracks mm-hmm. and the greed that goes on. Well, she frames Russ and uh, there's she puts a little bit of blood on his slipper and then I think she kind of yeah. just taps it around and and then now fast forward to he's being questioned that very night and he's sobbing on and off you know like one would and he says I don't put my slippers in the closet because that's where they they found mm-hmm. them he says I don't do that and then they they question him uh, who was last seen with her and he says Pam mm-hmm. and anyway they question him further well what do you think of this Pam he's like oh no she's nice I've seen her a few times and at that point did he know that no. the insurance had been changed oh that's a good question I don't I don't know because it had only been four days before the murder yeah that the insurance policy was changed from we're assuming Russ to Pam yeah Mm-hmm. Or, I don't know. I was about to say maybe that it was in the daughter's name. I, but yeah, I don't know. Crazy. Yeah. But he has no idea that Pam is feeding the investigators and then later the prosecutor mm-hmm. uh, all of this uh, stuff about About Russ, him, framing him. About him, yeah. And being he's, and an he's saying she seems like a nice lady. Yeah. <laughs> unbeknownst to him right the she's poor guy saying, yeah that he he tried to put pillows over her head just to see what it was like pam is making all this up and telling the prosecutors and the yeah. detectives and what's crazy is nobody else none of their other friends agreed with this right, theory right at all but the investigators and the prosecutor never they dismiss it completely all of these things and as we said russ not only did he have a solid alibi times four, right? He also went to um, Arby's after leaving his friends, and that's time stamped. He's got the receipt. He was seen on um, the CCTV cameras mm-hmm. uh, as being placed where he said that he was. Right. None of this was allowed in court. Uh, Joel Schwartz is his attorney. By the way, so the very next day after the murder, they arrest him. On no evidence. They did. No, he was free to go. He was just being questioned. Yeah, but the next day he was arrested. When he was questioned by the police, Mm -hmm. he was there for 48 hours Mm -hmm. being questioned. But he was not there as um, a a suspect. You know what I mean? He was being questioned. Mm -hmm. He was free to go if he wanted to. He did not have to do that. Mm -hmm. He did it because he thought that he he knew he didn't do it. Right, right. And he thought that he was helping them Mm -hmm. to come to figure out who did do it. Right. And they used all of that against him. They did. They did a polygraph. He failed it. Right. But he had been smoking dope the night before. Right. So there was that. Plus, he was absolutely out of his mind. Plus, polygraphs are just kind of like junk science. They're not admissible in court. He agreed to do it anyway. Yeah. And he he talked and talked and he just gave them the facts of what happened. Mm -hmm. But um, he didn't have an attorney with him. No. And that's probably one of the key things that you can take away from any of this. Right. Yeah. Because this could happen to anybody. Mm -hmm. It could happen to you. It could happen to me. Mm -hmm. Somebody gets, you know, some crazy ideas. I always worry about Kenny because his words would be so (laughs) twisted. (laughs) Any of us, especially under those crazy circumstances. Yeah. Um, but here's the here's the takeaway, right? 
I met, remember that defense attorney that I met oh, one yeah. time? Yep. And she said, yep. she, I, I met a, a woman at a conference and she was a defense attorney and she was talking to me about her career and stuff. And she said in the many years that she had been doing defense, she had never seen anyone talk themselves out of a crime. But, you know, like talk yeah. their way out of it in yeah. terms of getting convicted. Mm-hmm. But she has seen many times where people talk themselves into a crime, even though they didn't do it. Yeah. The police just, you know, there's coercion, yep. there's whatever. Never, never, never talk to the police ever. Don't talk to the police, even if they think, oh, you, you got something to hide. And you then, get yourself course, a lawyer. Yeah. Then, of course, it looks suspicious as soon as someone says, I don't want to talk. I want a lawyer because I've seen that before, too. Right. These, but cause this, I watch a lot of crime. <laughs> this woman says, and she told me this because of my five boys. She said, if your boys are ever questioned, you know, mm-hmm. for any reason, because mm-hmm. she's seen it over and over and over again, mm-hmm. you tell them, dummy up. And get a lawyer. Mm-hmm. Because at least a lawyer, if Russ had done that, which he had nothing to hide, and he didn't want to sh- throw any suspicion on himself, so he just wanted to cooperate. Yeah. But had he said, I want a lawyer, the lawyer would have not agreed to having the polygraph. And mm-hmm. of course, he could have overrid it, overridden it, overrided it. How do you say, however you <laughs> say it? Overrode? Yes. <laughs> he could have done that. But... Um, at least he would have somebody who was looking out for his butt. Yeah. And not what they were trying to do is just go along with whatever Pam was saying. Yeah. Also, he did not know that smoking pot would throw off the lie detector thing, the polygraph. And But the police would have known that. Well, and back then, and, smoking pot was a crime. This is over 10 years ago. There was yeah. no legalized marijuana back then. Do you think Missouri... Um, has it legal now? I don't, I don't know. know. They might, but, but a lot of places do. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. lots of reasons for him to do what he did mm-hmm. in terms of just trying to solve this thing. Mm-hmm. But he was there for two full days. He hadn't had any sleep. He was absolutely in shock, you know, he at was. the beginning. And he does later say, I want a lawyer. I um, I was listening to his interview. Yeah. And he does say it, but he is arrested whatever like right after that yeah they arrest him and uh, and pam meanwhile there's all of this stacked up stuff about her when she was questioned um it did come into play about the beneficiaries that she's the beneficiary for the 150k and uh she says my mom is worth, or I'm the beneficiary for her, and it's how much money? 500000 500000 She's like, if I, I mean, she's like, I hate to say it, but. <laughs> There's easier she's ways like, for me to easy. get money. Yeah, exactly. Okay, oh. even though she said that, mm-hmm. okay, I, it just baffles me that the cops didn't go, huh, last person to see her, huh, this insurance policy was just changed four days ago, mm-hmm. and huh, she's dead. Yeah. Those three things. Yeah. Don't even. I don't I, even. I just cannot fathom that this could happen. I mean, it, obviously, it's a horrific, evil act to have happened to Betsy. Mm-hmm. I believe that it was also evil and horrific to happen to Russ. Absolutely. He had nothing to do with this. I, and to not even look at her when she was the last person to be with her. And How her, can you not look at that? I mean, look at us. We have no criminal justice training, but we have seen a lot of Dateline. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and the ID we, channel in 48 yes. hours. It's terrible. Ever, it's terrible. Well, okay, yeah, but that's um, that's the obvious thing. Like, a- any idiot, like, if two, two of us can figure it out, mm-hmm. the cops can't figure it out. If I was a person who lived in that jurisdiction, mm-hmm. I would be very afraid. Oh, yeah. That Leah Askey, oh, you know, yeah. her, the prosecutor. the prosecutor. That's why voting really does matter. You, Abs- yeah, and it, yesterday was election it day. It was. And, uh, yeah. I asked a few other people, okay, now, what do you know about this judge and this judge? But we yeah. really don't know a lot. You, Yes. But that woman was voted out of office the very next election. Yeah. Rightly so. Yes. And I don't know. Yeah. She should have been stripped of all of her. She should not be in the legal business. No, and even to this day when she's interviewed or after it was all said and done, Dateline put out that what about Pam thing and then they did this follow-up thing and finally Leah Askey is interviewed and she sounds so defensive. She and is. And she to this day is like, 
uh, Pam, yeah, no, I believe she did not commit this murder against her friend, but these other, this other murder, yeah, she just lost it. Mm-hmm. That's all. She just, she's had enough. What? Yeah. <laughs> but, okay, so back to this Leah Askey. It's her first time doing a murder trial, and uh, she's kind of friends with the judge. The judge does not allow this Joel um, Schwartz, Schwartz, who is the defense attorney for Russ, doesn't even allow him to question the cell phone pings that he knows puts Pam at the murder scene. And it conflicts with her story. Her story constantly changes. Russ's is consistent all along. And uh, he also... Back up. Yeah. Not only is Russ's story consistent out of his mouth, okay? Yeah. But it's also consistent yeah. out of multiple witnesses yep. and pings from the cell phone tower and receipts from Arby's yeah. and video surveillance right. from him running into like whatever he had to get dog food or something. And so the prosecutor says about that, about Jeez. the about the alibi, she's like, yeah, they're all in on it. Uh-huh. But then she later says, well, no, I wasn't insinuating that. I'm just saying that one of them went and got the receipt from Arby's uh-huh. for Russ. Uh-huh. That's what she said. <laughs> Cause they're, cause in their state of mind, they're they're at guys night and they're smoking dope yeah. and they're like, you know what? Let's just go to Arby's to get a receipt. No, right. Russ had the munchies. He wanted a Arby's burger. Thank God. Yeah. Thank God he did. Like you know, I don't know. Get the receipt and he. I guess he threw it on the floor of his car and and actually I saw an interview of of the actual uh, lawyer of Joel Schwartz mm-hmm. and he, yeah me too and he did say that it's kind of a it could be that it was a good thing that the police um, interrogated him for those two days mm-hmm. you know mm. because they were they then went back to these places locations and they re- retrieved the video that it, it's only there for so long and then it's you know yeah not the over. investigators but russ's attorney did that right right yeah the investigators no no they didn't do that <laughs> nothing to see here mm-hmm. oh. in fact the judge says when when uh joel argues that he wants to bring this into play about you know where where was pam during all of this and here i've got this evidence that supports uh, what's his name? Russ's innocence. Mm-hmm. The judge says, eh, it's too confusing for yeah. the jurors. They won't understand the cell phone ping and it's irrelevant is what she says, she, which is unbelievable. It, it's. I think that that is more than unbelievable. That is such a, it, that should be a crime in and of itself. Yeah, that, that I, I think she it is. wouldn't allow for this man who in our world, in this country, mm-hmm. you're supposed to be innocent until you're proven guilty. And and his own lawyer couldn't show that there that there's no way he could be here. And there is guess what? There is a way that she could. Plus, there ha- they have to be um, convicted on or something about reasonable doubt. You have to bring reasonable doubt right. in there. Right. Well, he was. How do you how do you create a reasonable doubt if you can't bring in right. any doubt? So I don't, I don't know. Getting all excited. I know. I'm like, <laughs> This is how we were yesterday when we were recording it, except we were just like spitting out everything. Yeah, la, 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 la. yeah, yeah. It was funny. <laughs> now it's funny. With our Slurpees. <laughs> yes. All the Slurpees. People, if you, I don't know if I should recommend crime show reenactments because there's, there's victims in this thing and we have to think about Why? that. Which one but were you going to recommend? I, the thing Daily? about Pam, the, the Renee Zellweger oh, yeah, yeah, thing yeah. and the Slurpees and the... Um, Re- Renee Zellweger, she portrays this woman beautifully, mm-hmm. hilariously in a way. Yeah. Um, and, and Renee is such a gorgeous, you know, Hollywood actress and this woman is chubby and uh-huh. and they put a fat suit on her well it has to be a fat suit well yeah. yeah but people wondered because renee had gained weight for that um bridget whatever oh bridget jones yeah mm. she actually gained weight for that role but oh. then you know it was a kind of a thing then she had to get it off and blah 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 so uh. she wore a fat suit okay to be pam you know the first time i um uh, realized about anything about this story we were on vacation i had that people magazine yeah and it said that this was going to be airing and we were like wait (laughs) yeah (laughs) it's hard to understand who the real people were and the actors yeah anyway it is a good series the thing about pam i think it's on one of the streaming services netflix or prime i think Uh, yeah or peacock because it's an nbc thing yeah so anyway uh so that was 
uh, that, and uh, poor Russ gets convicted. He and gets thrown convicted. to jail, life in prison, life in prison without parole. Unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Imagine what he's thinking when that jury comes back with that verdict. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And what his lawyer is thinking. Right. And, and what Pam is thinking. You know what Pam is thinking? Hmm. I got away with it. She knows she got away with it. For sure. And sometime around this time, uh, somebody contacted the producer for Dateline. And they kind of thought, yeah, maybe we'll look into this. Well, mm-hmm. as this goes on, they're like, okay, there is definitely a story here. There's, there's, there's something. And somewhere in between this... Uh, the produce this producer Kathy for Dateline. She reaches out to Pam and says, "You know, let's do an interview." Well, Pam refuses and refuses, and at some point when she leaves a courtroom for another case, which we'll talk about in a few minutes, um, she says to the cameras, "Say hi to Kathy." Oh, and all this time, Kathy's thinking because they have a texting relationship. Yeah. She's like, "Why would she say that?" Well, it comes into play later because she uses. Um, <laughs> She uses Kathy's name in a way to lure uh, this unsuspecting two people. You know, and that when when she did that, say hi to Kathy. You mm-hmm. can see you can see that because it's on video. Yeah, so you can Google it and find her yeah. saying it. It just it's chilling like that. It just, is chilling. It goes through me now that you know all these facts have come to the surface mm-hmm. as so chilling. Like, ha ha, I got away with it. Oh, she's yeah. such say a hi to Kathy. Kathy's on my side. Yeah. She believes her own BS. She really does. Mm-hmm. She constantly had throughout the, these years a, a smitten smirk on her face mm-hmm. all along. Just so narcissistic and just twisted. Yeah. Anyway, um, so now, uh, now it's 2013. It's only two years later. And Pam's mom dies. Hmm. From what a happened? fall from a balcony from her apartment at a senior living place. Oh, no. Yes. Who was the last person to see her before she died? Yup. It was <laughs> Hup. <laughs> yup. It was Hup. It was Hup. Her daughter. <laughs> yes. And she says as she leaves the um, senior living place, hey, my mom's good for the night. She won't need dinner and she won't need anything in the morning either. Yeah. That's what she, the last words that she says. And, they and that, the death was, um, it was ruled that it was an accident. They investigated the death and they went, oh yeah, she, she fell off the balcony. At that time they did. Mm-hmm. That's, that's right. And what unfolds as suspicion surrounds uh, Pam more and more, they do go back to this case of her mother dying which by the way pam gets the what was it five hundred thousand dollars and her siblings nothing so i'm thinking since pam worked in the insurance industry she must have written that policy or whatever had a major role in it um well her greed alone i mean and her mom had some mental you know deficiencies so she could have done all kinds of things mom i need this money so that i can take care of the burial it's going to cost five hundred thousand dollars you know yeah and she later says yeah my mom died of alzheimer's which was not the truth she died from (laughs) this fall i mean she's all over the place and she hasn't been convicted of this crime as of yet right but it's coming it's it's alleged it's alleged and it's but they did determine that it is absolutely impossible for those railings to have been busted out um, just by leaning on them or falling. Because right. it was on Halloween, actually, in these... So the, yeah. so they've gone back to yeah. investigate this case, and they have taken away the uh, official, it's an accident, and now it's, like, questionable. Undetermined yeah. is what they say All right, now. so they're going to get to the bottom of that eventually. She'll probably be brought up on charges mm-hmm. on that murder. Right murder mm-hmm. of her own mother yeah Jeez. yeah and did we say that the mother had i don't know how many times the amount of ambien which is a sleeping yeah. pill in her system when she died yeah now being that she did have a little bit of dementia it's possible she could have accidentally taken too much but it it, it doesn't uh, it's not pointing that and you know way. by the way we do have to say if we haven't said it before with the 
the death of Betsy. Mm -hmm. We did mention that the case is coming up next month. And this is all alleged because it is you you are innocent until you are proven guilty in a court of law and you are convicted by a court or a a jury, Mm -hmm. you know, of your peers or a judge. If, you know, that's Mm -hmm. the case, if it's a uh, bench trial. Uh, So Pam is right now innocent. Mm. She is innocent of the death of her best friend who had cancer. And the death of her mother, mm-hmm. who had uh, was elderly and weak and sick and had dementia at least, minimum, right? Mm-hmm. But those two deaths are going to be investigated further, and she is on trial for one. And then I don't know, when is she going to come up on trial for the, the one for her mother? I don't know. I don't know that that's in In, in the play. works. Right. So um, they, they've just... I know they want to peg her because... This that would then be three, and there's all I do know this too. There's another um, incident or murder, or whatever that they're starting to look at her for it as well. Wow. And also, we didn't mention this earlier, but there were unusual things that happened even when she was working at the insurance aid uh, place. Mm-hmm. She forged some signatures. Mm-hmm. She had been fired, uh, f- terminated from two previous insurance jobs. There were some suspicious keying of cars, mm. not only in the parking lot of um, where, uh, she worked. where she worked, but also in her neighborhood. Strange things, you know, that just seem to circle around her. They depicted as well on the series something about an animal that was killed. And it, so I looked into that, too. Yeah. And definitely there was uh, a neighbor that had some bones and blood on it because Pam had some issues with her. So just this strange taunting that they believe she did. Yeah. And again, you know, she's just accused of it. So, okay. okay. So so let's get to Lewis, the case with Lewis. Okay. Do we not want to talk about the, um, the insurance money that she didn't give to the daughters? Oh, no. Let's talk about that first. Sorry. Yes. Okay. Well, also, let's just say this, too. After the funeral for Betsy... And now Pam is in possession of, of this money. 150000 she, mm-hmm. she does not give any of it to the family for uh, the funeral expenses. So they have to come up with the cash mm-hmm. to pay for the yeah. funeral. Yeah, and they still don't think that that's suspicious either. <laughs> now, that being said, um, at some point, I'm not sure when it was, but now there's a trial for the money that the daughters are supposed to get Pam was supposed to give that money to the daughters when they came of age. Well, she doesn't give it to them. She Did she say that she gave it away? Did she say that? I thought that there was some question about whether or not she had bought a house. But then I, I also thought that she gave it to her son some way, somehow, oh. in order to hide it from, you know, mm-hmm. when, when she was getting... Like the heat was on. Yeah. But the courts, I think they figure out she does indeed have the money. And in this court case, that where uh, the daughters are trying to get the money, mm-hmm. they don't win. Pam gets to keep the money. And she probably knew this because she worked in the insurance uh, right. business. So she probably, whatever she did. But this court case is crazy. You can hear this too, where she talks over the judge. The judge is oh, asking right. her simple questions. And she's playing this cat and mouse game where she says, what? I can't hear you. What? <laughs> what? And then she goes, uh, whoa, 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 yeah. whoa, whoa, yeah. whoa, whoa. Over him. Right. When he's talking to her. Whoa, whoa. And it's so exaggerated. The whoa, 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 yeah. whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> okay. Of All of that to say, okay, so so now these poor girls, they've th- they've lost their mother in a tragic way. Their stepdad is has been jailed. And now he's out, right? At this, at the time of this case, I don't know. I do know he was uh, retried and released in 2015, and I'm not sure where well, the this, time frame. Yeah. Okay, so these two girls have gone through hell and back. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And now they're just trying to get the insurance money that their mother mm-hmm. intended for them anyway. Right. And they got to fight this nut, Pam, mm-hmm. and they also got to fight the courts. And had the court done their job? With the first thing. Yes. With yes. Betsy's murder yes. case. If mm-hmm. they had done their job the way they were supposed to, mm-hmm. these two girls wouldn't have to be going through this. A lot of Because Pam events. would have been convicted what? of murder. Right. Likely. Because it's coming. 
Yeah. But likely. Mm -hmm. The evidence all shows that. Absolutely. The dad wouldn't be in jail. So he'd be there to support them. Right. You know, and help them. Because they were young adults. Yes. They were young. Yes. And who, you know. And and sadly, (laughs) they, they believe now or for a long time that their stepfather did do this in the end. At first the uh Betsy's mother and the the grandchildren they believed uh Russ's innocence but later they they changed their mind. Well, you can't blame them because um, they've got all the cops and all the people in authority going he did it. Mm-hmm. He did it. Sorry, you know these things happen, yeah. but yeah, he did it. He snapped. He right. snapped Lud. He yeah. he went snapple so on them. It's sad cuz he loved those girls. They loved him. It's it's even deeper than sad. It is Tragic. horrifying. It is horrifying that these lives yeah. can be flipped like a pancake yes. on a hot grill yes. in a minute. Yes. Because that's what happened. Yeah. And the, the authorities mm-hmm. are there to protect the yeah. innocent. Yeah, well, it's supposed to be. And they should have done their job. That's why this Leah Askey and, mm-hmm. and whoever else was like under her tutelage and like listening to her. Yeah. Those people should not be sleeping well at night. That's right. Because they created all this. That's right. And not only do they have blood on their hands, but not only all of that, the investigators later, uh, when Russ is about to be released, they literally feed Pam a theory. And they say, and you can hear the interview, why they recorded it, nobody knows. Yeah. But they are, say to her, yeah, you, you did see Russ when you dropped Betsy off, didn't you? And she says no. But she later says, yeah, I did. Yeah, I saw him. He was there. And so they not only didn't look at Pam, but they actually fed her more. You know what I think is playing uh, or at play with the law enforcement at that point is pride. They have this issue of yeah. pride mm-hmm. like we figured out this case and then all no matter what the evidence shows yeah the physical evidence the testimony of you know all of his friends plus the girlfriend you know they didn't care because it didn't fit the narrative that they wanted right. and the pride of we figured this out this is what happened you know yeah. and pride. then oh gosh okay so we're talking about greed we're talking we're, we're gonna go into the seven <laughs> deadly sins right here yeah <laughs> gluttony let's do it yeah pam had gluttony Ugh. okay so anyway so now uh 2015 and he's being retried russ is being retried and pam is like hmm. well is he appealing is it an appeal because he's already been convicted yes. so it has to be an appeal yes it's an appeal okay and he does get to be uh, retried, and which is a miracle because it's very, very rare right. that that happens. Um, and as this is happening, Pam is feeling the heat now. So what does she do? <laughs> she concocts a crazy story that she, and this is three and a half years later now, and she says, oh yeah, you know what? Betsy and I were, we were lovers, oh, but we gosh. weren't attracted to other women, but yet we were. So she she puts it in such a way that she says, uh, yeah, we, we were really intimate and I could replace Russ for certain things. But she's smart enough to, to say, but we weren't really attracted to other women. I think she says that because she knows Betsy's friends and family uh, are going to say that's not true. Yeah. So she's going to try to make it look like that was just only between her and Betsy. And now she's got this other motive for Russ to be enraged by um, him Hearing fi- that she's him finding like out that they were. Yeah. And he <laughs> she even says the word in in um, in court or whenever she's being interviewed. And she says, yeah, yeah, yeah. He called us muffs. And then <laughs> she. And then she says it. He was so mad that he spit, and she's like, "Yeah, it was like nasty." And she's just she's believing over. her own stuff. Yeah, you know, she's just circling it around in her head, and she comes up with an answer for everything. She does. By the way, this appeal and then this retrial, mm-hmm. Leah Askey is no longer the prosecutor. She has been replaced. She's been replaced by so, somebody named Wood. Last right. name Wood. And I'm sure that he ran on, oh, look at this gal. She, <laughs> yeah, I, right. Anyway. Also, she, three and a half years later, now she says, oh, yeah, there's an email that Betsy wrote to me. We'll c- c- find it, Pam investigators. Said that. Pam said yeah. that. Find this email. And it conveniently says, Betsy, or rather, Pam, I think Russ is guilty of this, this, and this. <laughs> look into this. Well, they find out it was. Uh, it came from a different computer, was transferred over. There's no way 
that Betsy wrote this email. Right. Okay. In addition to all of that, she also creates this convoluted thing of finding, I don't even know how to put this into words. She goes out to low-income neighborhoods pretending to be a Dateline producer. Kathy. And even Her says, friend. <laughs> she's <Jeez>. Kathy. <laughs> <laughs> and she comes across this woman named Carol Alfred. Al- mm-hmm. Alfred. Alfred. And Alford, I guess, actually. And so then um, this Carol is suspicious because Pam says, yeah, get in the car. It's a sound bite for Dateline. And we just want to do a practice murder. <laughs> and Like she's hiring her. Like she's like hiring she's, her cash. Like this is what Dateline does. Like yeah. they just go through neighborhoods and they just look wave, for sound bites. They wave cash out the window. Yeah. And because she said to this Carol, she said, it's cash. Yeah, it's it's cash. a thousand dollars cash, not traceable. But so you can't no taxes. bring your cell phone or your ID <laughs> because you know the other producers they don't like clutter. That's so what that's what she, she said. said. <laughs> uh, well, Carol is curious and suspicious at the same time. So she gets in the car, and um, then she just at some point says, "You know what? I gotta let my dog out. Take me back." And actually, Pam does. Thank God. Yes. Well, you know, Carol, she, I mean, I would be tempted to buy a thousand dollars cash, I think, you know, but I don't know if my spidey senses would, um, would pick up on this sounds ridiculous. You know what I mean? I don't know. Cause I, uh, really, I just you don't can't know. Bring your phone and your ID and, <laughs> and she's all alone. Honestly, I don't know. I don't know how I would respond to that. But thankfully, Carol did have like a, a, a sense that this isn't right. Something's up. And she says that she felt that way even before she got in the car. But she was curious. Yeah. So uh, it's pretty risky. So Pam takes Carol back to the to her home mm-hmm. so that she can go in and take care of the dog. And then eventually says, just get out of here or something. Yeah. And thankfully, uh, good old Carol has um, those cameras like ring. I don't know what brand it was, but she's got a camera and she, she can prove she can prove. Yeah, that this happened. So she calls the police. But unfortunately, uh, Pam had already picked up this this poor Louis Gumpenberger. Yeah. And she uh, writes a little like note of instructions for him to do, which is, of all things, something along the lines of get uh, get Pam, get Russ's money, <laughs> you know, and it makes it look like was the plan to make it look like Russ wants his money back, that beneficiary money. The 150000 that Pam has. Yes. And, and she's trying to frame him again for right. um, stealing the money from her. Exactly. And Crazy. Right. So in the process, she gives this Lewis, who has a brain injury from a previous accident, and the mother later says he is not only mentally not capable but physically not able to run or do any of the things that Pam had said because Pam calls 911 when this Lewis comes Mm -hmm. I I think she first sees him somewhere else and he follows her home she says well she calls 911 Mm -hmm. and she says this really fake help help (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> no, you can't have my money. No. And she shoots him on the 911 call five times. And what the 911 people say is what people don't really know is that when you call 911, they're recording before the dispatcher even says, um, 911, what's your emergency? Mm-hmm. Well, I didn't know that. I didn't either until this. And there's complete silence. So if there really was an intruder, mm-hmm. uh, there definitely would have been chaos picked up and so forth. And there's none of that. Also, the $100 bills that she paid him, uh, <laughs> the same serial number and tracing is found on her bed. And he had the money on right. him. So it absolutely places her, you know, in this thing. She is um, then questioned and eventually convicted of his murder. But also when she's being questioned, for some reason, the police leave the interview room and there's a pen on the table and she's eyeballing it. And you can see this on camera. Mm -hmm. And she kind of slips it into her (laughs) pocket. I mean, this is just crazy. And then you see her feeling her neck and her, uh, like for her carotid artery or whatever. Right. 
and somehow she gets the guard to take her to the bathroom and she stabs herself <laughs> in she, the neck both sides and her wrists yeah but with she, the pen with the pen so then they have to bust into the bathroom to save her because you know they you know yeah they don't want her to be dead right yeah not yeah. on their watch especially yeah how bad would that be? go figure she kills all these other people but she can't kill herself well and she, they say that um she, she just didn't did this for hard. attention and drama and to just create chaos yeah they don't believe that she was trying to kill herself but just to just who, do this. who can explain this who, woman th- yeah i would just, not want to be inside her brain and i told you this yesterday that there was another um person on youtube who had described what she looked like in her mugshot <laughs> with the she yes. so so you have to google, google pam it. hup mugshot now she's got a couple of mugshots because she's been now yeah um you know she's accused of killing mm-hmm. uh, betsy yeah. which is coming up next month but the mugshot for her accusing this lewis is after she had <laughs> done this pen suicide yeah and she's got these bandages on and this He's... commentator says <laughs> it looks like she's got two maxi pads around her <laughs> neck and it does it does it look like and she's got this smirk on her face too which is crazy. again like she's believing her own narrative yeah. i mean she's just marching to the beat of yeah. the drum of pam what really makes me mad is she takes an alfred plea i hate those things <clears throat> yeah and basically for so, lewis for lewis on, the, on this for crime. lewis mm-hmm. and basically what that is is it um she's still convicted and she's still in there for life but she still claims her innocence but because there's enough evidence stacked up against her right uh that's i just bugs me because you just want the person to say i'm guilty or admit it well and in this whole case you're seeing more more and more people like that like you're seeing i i think that all of the law enforcement that were involved in betsy's the the trial you know Mm -hmm. for the murder of betsy they were having the same issue You know, they were like, I'm I even though there's all kinds of different evidence that stacks up against what we supported, we're not going to say, you know, that we're actually, you know, at fault here. No, they have blood on their hands for sure. What investigator wouldn't look at all of this evidence that Joel, even especially after this Joel, the defense attorney points it out? Why would they not look down there, Uh, down that path? Because they wanted to protect their own butt, and Mm -hmm. it was big time pride. Yeah. But uh, we also want to mention Russ did get $2 million eventually out of this whole ordeal, which is, I think, appalling. It is. And it's nothing. He should have got $5 million at minimum. Yeah. But I'm sure that they they got him whatever they could, and he deserved every penny. I don't think that you can possibly pay him enough yeah. to make up for what he'd been through. And it's changed the course of his life forever. Yeah. By the way, he marries he. I don't Carol. know how that he marries Carol. Isn't that great? <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's one like you know little nugget that came out of it. Yeah, and they're happy. All right, so now going fast forward, here we are today in mm-hmm. November of 2022. Next month, Pam will begin, the trial will begin mm-hmm. on the murder of her friend Betsy. Yeah. And, you know, we'll see what the outcome is of that. And yeah. then who knows what will happen with the uh, m- death of her mother. Okay, so so she's been convicted of murdering Lewis, who was the cover up for <laughs> the other crimes. Right. And again... If the law enforcement people had done their job the These way people. they were supposed to do the job to protect the people of their jurisdiction, mm-hmm. the mother m- may be still alive. I mean, she might have died of natural causes, but that's in God's hands. Yeah. And right. Lewis would right. still be alive doing the handyman work and taking care of his kids. And, you know, his girlfriend was interviewed and it just broke my heart yeah. that yep. he was kind and he was, uh, you know, his mental capacity had diminished yeah. because of his car accident. So he was kind of like a fifth grade, like mental capacity, right, right. but he's, he had a great life. Right. I know. Oh my goodness. Yeah. You can hear him on this 911 call in yeah. the background and you can clearly tell that he's horrible, not, yeah, horrible that terrible. this, that this evil woman would use and abuse elderly ill cancer ridden you know she has no conscience. mentally no jeez she's yeah. a pariah mm-hmm. okay anything else about this case 
Have we pretty well, much covered it? Pretty much. That yeah. There's a lot more oh, crazy, geez. but it's you know we can't even fit it all in. There's no. no way because this podcast that Dateline did, it was eight episodes long, so and they were each about a half an hour. But then the series, how many? I don't know how many um, episodes were in the series. It's a long. It had been decades of weird, crazy stuff. Well, you know, you can definitely check it out if if you're curious about more of the details. And I just found out this morning, I didn't know this because I didn't look into it beforehand, but Joel Schwartz has a book out. Yes. And it's called Bone Deep. Bone Deep, yeah. Because this poor Betsy was, her wrists were cut to the bone. And the other wounds, many of them were post-mortem. She had died and then, uh, or whomever allegedly Pam yeah. went nuts on her and stabbed her like 55 times. I did. I just remembered something else mm-hmm. why they were looking at Russ in the first place mm-hmm. because he had said in the very beginning that it must have been suicide. Right. And he thought that because Betsy had tried, she had contemplated suicide in the past because of the cancer. Mm-hmm. And he knew, they all knew that she was going to be dying. And so he just assumed. And the funny thing is, is, it, it, she had been stabbed 50 times, as we said, but he didn't know that. He couldn't tell. And if he had stabbed her, he never would have implied suicide. No. You know? And I guess the the um, the wounds were hidden by clothing, yeah. and mm-hmm. she, there wasn't as much blood as one might think because she was already dead when all those wounds were... Oh. So it wasn't like the body was pumping the blood out. I don't know exactly like the forensics of that, mm-hmm. but yeah. But he he didn't know. He what a shame! Tell. Yeah, everybody should be praying for Russ and Carol and the girls, the daughters, and mm-hmm. the mother of Betsy if she's still with us. I don't know, but pray for these loved ones mm-hmm. of Betsy and of Lewis. You know his children. Yeah, they have to go on. You know. Yeah. And um, Betsy's children. Just pray I for hope all they these reunite people. because the one daughter, last I knew, she, um, they just don't have a relationship with their stepdad anymore. Even though the one, Mariah, sounded like she's starting to believe his innocence. Yeah. I don't know, but yeah, it's so sad. Relationships. Tragic. Oh yeah, very tragic. All right. Well, Ooh. let's let's move along to some personal safety tips. Okay. Because I know that you know you can't always predict what kind of a nutbag is going to enter your life and sit next to you at State Farm for 10 years and mm-hmm. then murder you when, yeah. you have, when you're dying of cancer. Yeah, uh, You can't predict um, those kinds of things. But here are some things, because I, I started getting all like obsessed with <laughs> personal safety. <laughs> because Catherine and I travel, we, we had a great time in October traveling for breast cancer awareness. Um, and we go to hotels and we're just two women, you know, going to a hotel and we just need to be safe. And so I started looking into all these little personal devices and stuff. And then I found, um, this is from the East Tennessee State University's website. They just have a little blurb here that came up on my Google search. Mm -hmm. Here's four ways to increase your personal safety Mm -hmm. for everybody. This is a generic thing. Number one. Reduce or eliminate opportunities that make you a target. Yeah. You know, so like some examples would be walk with confidence. Know where you're going. Don't look down at your phone. No, keep your phone, you know, like don't, no, don't Mm -hmm. be scrolling on your phone. Um, just, just be aware. Yeah. Okay. And that's the second one is increase your awareness in places where you're most comfortable. Mm. Your home, um, parking lots, the grocery store. Um, yeah, the grocery store is your normal place. routine. Yeah. You know, be aware, increase your awareness. When you get into your car, hit the lock button. Yeah. Always. Yeah. And if there's a van parked next to your car mm. on the, you know, the driver's side, get into the car from the other side mm-hmm. or go back into the store where you were and request security to walk you out, whether it's uh, another person, uh, um, you know, what, whoever. Mm. Uh, it doesn't have to be a cop. It could be an employee. Yeah. Okay. Three, trust your instincts regarding, regardless of embarrassment. Okay. So just trust your instincts. Mm-hmm. Like that Carol. Yeah. Some way, somehow, when she was with Betsy. Mm-hmm. Now, Betsy, or not Betsy. I'm uh, sorry. Pam, Pam. Pam. She's with Pam. Pam's driving. She's in Pam's car. Mm-hmm. So Pam is in control. Mm-hmm. And some way, somehow, Carol gets the feeling of, huh. Yeah. <laughs> 
we, we oh, got to get out of here. Too deep here. And she makes up a story that she's forgot to let the dog out. Mm-hmm. I can't believe Pam took her back. I know. And um, so trust your instincts. If your instincts are saying something, you know, like you should question, don't worry about being rude. Just trust your instincts. Yeah. Okay. Number four, prepare your schedule daily with safety in mind. Okay, so if you have to go alone to the grocery store, maybe see if you can go in the morning rather than at night or before it gets dark. Or can you go with a friend? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, gosh, I used to shop at night all the time. When the kids were little. Yep. They're in bed. Hubby's home with the kids. I used to do that, too. And you and I, um, since the pandemic, we go and pick up our groceries together a lot. We do a lot of things together. (laughs) Just get yourself a bestie. A real bestie. A real, yeah. Uh Uh-huh. A fake one. All right. Now, here's just some, it's kind of redundant, but it says, be responsible for your personal safety. Be alert to potential danger. Trust your instincts. Be aware of your surroundings. Avoid anything that does not feel safe. Anticipate possible problems. Be vigilant and prepared for anything. Hmm. And report suspicious activity. Okay, so this is, I haven't even shown you yet what I'm ordering from Amazon. Yeah. This but- is what I'm ordering for us when we travel in, in hotel rooms, mm-hmm. okay? I'm ordering, it's a portable lock. Okay. That I think this would be good for any house, and I'm going to use it on our house too. My husband's probably going to go, "Are you nuts?" <laughs> but I don't care. Like, watch Dateline run. <laughs> but it's a, it's like a lock that keeps the door locked, even if somebody has a key to your room, because okay. with hotels, yeah, the keys to the room can like people can go up to the desk and say, "I need a key. I locked myself out." And if they don't double check to make sure that that's the person who belongs to that room, that key can be given and they they can get into You're your vulnerable. room. Vulnerable, yeah. You're vulnerable. So this is like a little metal gizmo gasmo thing that fits into the the door jam. Huh. And it keeps the door locked from the inside even if somebody has a key on the outside. And so you can use it in your home, you can use it like women living in an apartment, mm-hmm. okay? You know, like your daughter yeah. in Florida. Yeah. They could use something like that. Another little thing is to put a wedge from the inside mm-hmm. so that the door those. doesn't open mm-hmm. easily. So anything to to keep from, you know, that well, door opening. Back to the thing you put in the door jam mm-hmm. in the lock. That works with the little electronic card keys? Like the electronic car key card card key whatever it's called the the little thing that that opens the lock yeah that whatever releases the mechanism the locking mechanism so that you can open the door yeah, right? right well this thing blocks that oh so it's only from the inside okay and then in, <laughs> and then you have to undo it to get out you uh-huh. know ron says you two are going to be locked in your room you're going to be <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's right. You're gonna be locked in. How do we get out? You're gonna have to call maintenance. <laughs> They're gonna have to remove the door. I said, well, better than being murdered. Oh, yeah, that's true. Okay, and then I thought of this too. This was my own idea. I didn't see it as oh, a boy. suggestion, but I'm gonna do it. Um, it's a door hanger that says "Do not disturb." Um. And then it says, um, what are those dogs that are trained? They're like um, service dog. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Service dog in room. Oh. Yeah. It's a door hanger that says, do not disturb service dog in room. Okay. So you put it on your door. Hmm. You have been thinking. Yes. Did I tell you that? um, So my sister, Wendy, and my daughter, Emily, when they were at um, recently at a hotel. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, someone had been in the room, they're positive, and also was trying to get in the room when they were in there. And they hurried up, they called the front desk, and it, they were not sure wh- who was doing that or what was going on, but it was definitely I'll tell you a what, security risk. And on top of all those things, so the lock, the portable lock, the wedge in the door, the doorknob that says there's a dog in here, mm-hmm. on top of that, a flashlight and a siren. Mm. Okay, Mm -hmm. so that you can make noise because I've looked into a bunch of other cases where this has happened (laughs) because I started to de-Google it all. And many times if a if a man gets into your room Mm -hmm. because this has happened, I I watched a woman's testimony. She was traveling for work. She had met someone 
at um, at the restaurant of the hotel mm-hmm. and just talked to him, like exchanged pleasantries. And that's about it. That was it. Mm-hmm. She didn't want anything to do with him. She went to her room and he called her from wherever he was. And she said, how did you know what room I was in? And he said, I have friends. So he had he knew somebody at the front mm-hmm. desk. And they showed surveillance footage of him giving her room key to this man. Gosh. Giving the room key to him. So he goes up to her room. She's sound asleep. Now it's been several hours later since the call happened. She's sound asleep. And she wakes up to him on top of her. Oh, my gosh. And he raped her. And she obviously survived. But she's the one who said that yeah. um, now when she travels, she carries this portable lock. Mm-hmm. And then I, I added the wedge and then the, mm-hmm. <laughs> the, the door hanger that says service dog um, you know, we in used, the room. Yeah, we used to have this little device. It was a wedge. And if the door were to open, it would trigger the wedge to alarm. Yeah. And it was loud. I yeah. don't know whatever happened to that. Oh, they, they make those. You can yeah, get those. It was mm-hmm. really loud. Yeah, and the other thing is, too, to refuse any room service. I mean, now, since COVID, and even before COVID, hotels started to, to use the um, the excuse green. of, we're saving water. Yeah, we're and going we're not green. Gonna, we're not going to give you any towels. But you don't want anybody in your room. You know, you, you do trust that they're not going to take your computer or your wallet or whatever. But you, you just don't want anybody in your room for any reason. Hmm especially if you're a woman and you are traveling alone or mm-hmm. just just with us like two women no stay out of the room you don't need to make the bed you don't need to get you if you need towels you go down to the desk and get them mm-hmm. and you don't call the room to have them bring something up you go down and get it this is all like the advice to stay safe mm-hmm. and you never if they say your room number mm-hmm. out loud you say give me a different room and don't say the room number because there could be people like just pre- yeah, pretending yeah. not to pay attention. You know, I used to work for um, three different hotels mm-hmm. and I was always very cautious about that with room numbers and mm-hmm. things like that. And um, I once got tricked into telling a spouse um, the phone records and oh my gosh, did that blow up in my face because... The woman found out her husband was cheating. Yeah. And that's a different story. But uh, anyway. There's a lot of crazy out there. Yeah. And we got to stay safe. Yeah. So it, speaking of staying safe, we had recorded an episode called mm. Home Security and Safety. It's episode number 38. 38. So we're recommending as a call to action based on this um, this episode, not that poor Betsy could have done anything right. about I mean, it. That was her friend. But just go back and listen to episode 38 about how to keep your home safe. There's a lot of tips there. And there's actually some devices that you can purchase for your home. Mm-hmm. And let's just be as safe as we can because nut jobs are out there like Pam. Yeah. All <laughs> right. Anything else you want to say about Pam Hop? No. Okay. Well, our next episode is on the cosmetic industry. Hey. <laughs> That'll be a nice light topic. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. Well, you've been listening to the Life Happens Laugh Anyway podcast. I'm still comedian Tracy DeGraff. I'm still Catherine. Let's see you next time. Goodbye. Goodbye.